Hello, Swoboheads. It's Greg Allison, Swobblehead News. Israel did strike in Iran, but the strike was more limited than we had initially feared. And Iran apparently has actually not struck back yet. So reports of uh, Iranian retaliation were apparently based on their air defense systems launching. So there's always in a fog of war, a lot of miscommunication. There's always some misunderstanding of what's going down. So the uh, fog is clearing just a little bit, and we're getting a little more insight as to what went down. The fact that is, uh, Iran has not struck back is interesting because they had said their uh, spot response would be immediate and severe. So what is going to happen next? What's the next shoe to drop? So what happened was Iran actually launched a drone strike, not a missile strike, a drone strike. And they hit facilities around Isfahan. Now, the IAEA, the IAEA, I'll say that carefully, <laughs> actually reported that there was no damage to the Iranian nuclear facilities. Uh, there were explosions around them, but not at them. So this may have been the kind of limited strike we were talking about that uh, that maybe there was a deal between the Biden administration, Iran, and maybe, uh, uh, excuse me, between the Biden administration, Israel, and maybe Israel is sticking to it. I don't know, guys. Uh, there's still a lot to learn, given the limited nature of the strike. One has to wonder if that's what all the EAMs were about. I assume it was that our forces were getting positioned just in case. So it was probably mostly a positional thing. Um, just to see what Iran would do to be prepared. And so far, there hasn't been a retaliation, as far as we know, from Iran to Israel. So, uh, yeah, I, I needed to go back and check the news cycle and on that stuff to see what we really were and <clears throat> to see how the fog was clearing. Now, I am going to update my uh, browser over here so I can open up my chat room, see what you guys are saying. So who's here tonight. And I will go into this. Thank you, Jesse, for asking a thumbs up. Good to see you, Michelle Lassasol and Jesse Mills. Killer Smurf, how you doing? All right, so let's uh, go into this. I'm going to show you the articles on this that are out there right now. <clears throat> By the way, with all this talk about fuel prices going up and prospects for the grid to go down, you might want to consider this Grid Doctor 300 solar supply system. It's got a 100-watt solar panel. It's got this Grid Doctor 300 system here, which has your battery, your power distribution, and all that. And this is a lithium iron uh, phosphate battery, and uh, your lithium ion. So it means it will take a lot more uh, charge cycles. And guys, this is the, for what you get in here. It's a lot better than deal than you get with a Jackery system like I bought, and it's a whole lot better deal with a solar panel. That's a really good deal, and it's cheaper than you can get it even on the uh, Grid Doctor uh, 300. And you get that by going to prep with Greg. Prep with Greg dot turn this around. MOC. <laughs> Just like nug. All right, guys. So and then you can also get the $50 off special on four weeks food supply. If uh, you're inclined to do that with everything going down, guys. Uh the escalation apparently is a little slower than we thought, but uh uh the Rubicon has been crossed. The Rubicon has been crossed because for the first time ever this month. We've had Israeli strikes on uh, an Iranian consulate, Iran strike on America, on America, on uh, Israel proper, and Israeli strike on Iran proper. That's never happened before. There's been a lot of proxy strikes, maybe covert strikes. There were a lot of fires and explosions in Iran a few summers back. We know that the Mossad took out a lot of the Iranian uh, nuclear scientists. There's been generals that's been taken out. So uh, this has been escalating for a long time. Iran has been seizing ships uh, for some time, but this is the first time the Rubicon of attack directly on uh, Israel and Iran has occurred. And Iran will probably do something. What will escalate? Will they de-escalate? I don't know, guys. Uh, time will tell. So Israeli missile, according to CBS News, you know, ABC broke this, and some of us got a little suspicious after seeing some of the other reports that come out. Uh, but indeed, uh, officials in, uh, from the U.S. military, Israel, and apparently Iran have all confirmed that this happened. So uh, two U.S. officials confirmed to CBS News that Israeli missiles hit Iran. 
And uh, well, it says missiles here. They were drones. It was a drone attack. So even this is a little bit off. Uh, the Iranian state uh, IRA, IRNA news agency said the air defense batteries fired across several provinces. This is probably what was taken for the Iranian response. It didn't elaborate on why the batteries fired. For a little bit, everybody was being a little coy. The uh, Israelis weren't admitting to it, and neither were the Iranians, which made it interesting. The Iranians admitted they had attacks at first, but they didn't say from whence they came. So I guess they were uh, all meeting to determine what they were actually going to say about it. That's the thing about the fog of war. Uh, so a uh, senior Israeli official said it was intended at, to signal Iran that Israel can attack its territory. So that, and that apparently they probably got across. So, uh, so they did hit a, a major air base near Isfahan, which uh, was home to F-14 Tomcats, as we mentioned earlier. And I will show you from the NASA fire tracker in a little bit, uh, some, some of what might be the fires associated with that. But indeed, the IAEA confirmed no damage to Iran's nuclear facilities. So this is not a nuclear war as of yet. There's no nuclear dirty war. There's no radiation leaks to be anticipated as of now. The drones would not have been powerful enough to have penetrated the tunnels and the deep bunkers and these hardened Iranian sites. In fact, they would be hard to hit with anything, even nuclear weapons, because they are very deep. And maybe that factored into this. So this was, uh, according to the Israeli officials, a message. But uh, we have heard reports that there have been some Iranian uh, injuries and lives lost. So we shall see. U.S. approves. So this is what I went back to, and I showed this last night on this channel. U.S. And I told you even then that this wasn't the only report I'd seen on this. This one said U.S. approves uh, Rafa Op, the strike on off Rafa, which apparently has occurred already, uh, or at least started in exchange for no Israeli counterstrikes on Iran. Well, this report said that, but I did see another one that said limited. So as I mentioned, I mentioned that last night. I saw another article. It said exchange for limited. Well, apparently the U.S. and Iran have cooked up a deal to uh, make the U.S. look blameless so the U.S. wouldn't be getting directly into it with Iran over this at this point in time. So... Um, All right, so uh, Israel told the U.S. Uh, uh, about its retaliation plans, but it said he told them Thursday. I would say, given uh, when the EAM started Wednesday, that the U.S. probably already knew about it. And here it said didn't endorse the response. Again, you got to wonder if this and the EAMs together meant that the United States was not in on it from the get-go, at least knowledge-wise, and in some of the response. And I think Iran would see that too. So uh, it's a good question, a really good question coming up here about Israel. Uh, so we don't know yet. There's still uh, what are the Iranians going to make of this? That's probably the most important thing. Uh, but Iran has come out just right prior to this, all going down, and said that given the uh, prospects for Iranian attacks, that they would have to basically uh, uh, make it possible to review our nuclear doctrine and deviate from previous considerations. Now, that's ambiguous. We don't really know what it means. Some have interpreted this to say that maybe Iran will go ahead and build the bomb. I submit maybe they already got the bomb. Maybe this uh, just deals with how they would use it, when they would use it. We don't know. This is ambiguous. And that's the problem. A lot of stuff going out there in the news. A lot of, you know, we're in the fog of war. We're in the fog of propaganda. And we're in the, you know, disinformation which, you know, is what propaganda is all about, coming from both sides. So this may be an indicator, but it's hard to really sometimes know exactly what they actually intend. This is a warning of some sort, absolutely. 
what does it really mean? Does it mean how they would use nukes or that they would produce one? You tell me. Between us, we could talk it all day, but we wouldn't know. That's just chitter chatter. What really matters is what's going on behind the scenes. And our veil is a little thick to be able to see through that. Uh, but prior to that, see, the foreign minister for Rand was in uh, D.C. or No, he was in the United States doing interviews when all this hit. And he, he had said the Iranian military response would be immediate and maximum level if Israel attacks right prior to their attack. Well, it's not been immediate. And maybe it's because of the limited nature of the attack. I don't know. But if the other shoe hasn't dropped yet, Iran is still likely to do something. Uh, Jason says the Israelis are smart and Iran shouldn't play the game with them. Uh, let's hope that this will quell it a little bit. Uh, you know, like I said, there's been an intense proxy war. Netanyahu has always wanted to take those nuclear facilities. He never got the support he really wanted for that through the Biden administration. He wanted. They actually ordered KC-135 refueling tankers. The Biden administration delayed their delivery, and that delay continues. Uh, so they would be reliant on American refueling if they wanted to take their F-35s over there. So that's not happened, and it may not happen, or it might still. Uh, we're on a slow burn here in escalation, but it is escalating because the Rubicon has been crossed. Now, this is if if is for hand. And there are fires reported here. This is the NASA Fire Information and Resource Management System. This information comes from Landsat satellites. And in any case, some pretty heavy fires on a couple of what looks like facilities in here. We will go in and have a look at these and see if we can discern something from this. It looks like heavy fires. This looks like it might be the air base. It definitely looks highly ordered like most military bases would be. And there's a runway. There's a runway. It looks like a runway there, so this must be their air base that was hit. It won't go in any further than that. That does look like a runway to me from here. Hard to tell. I like to get in closer. That could be a runway right there. You see these cross plastic? That's like what you see with the taxiways around a runway. So there could be a couple of runways here. Interesting, they're both east-west. That's kind of interesting. Maybe that's the prevailing wind direction in that area. I don't know. That's some pretty heavy hits, by the way. That's some pretty heavy hits, and it's all adjacent to what apparently is airfield and run uh, taxiways. So that indeed could have been targeting Tomcats, the F-14 Tomcats. Uh, looks like there's something over here. Now, if you back out, you'll see fires all over the place because there's always, you know, campfires and other things that's going to register on this. I don't know what that is it looks like it's more than one dot or whatever it is and then if we come out we see another big cluster down here we do know that an army base in syria was hit and again looks like an airfield right here that's heavy hits that and they said that the strikes were uh I believe west of uh, Isfahan. Well, there we go, guys. Now, that looks like barracks right there. Barracks are some kind of military buildings. You see them all looking the same in a pattern here, rode up. That's how, what they typically do on military bases. Given the looks of an airfield. Okay, that's a mountain. I was wondering what it was from uh, Google Earth earlier. So this, this is highly interesting here, my friends. Given attacks that heavy on an air base, there might be a response as of yet, but the nuclear facilities themselves weren't hit. Now, it's been reported by John Bolton. He said it looked like the strikes from Iran on Israel were trying to hit the Durham uh, Israeli nuclear facility. This must be the strikes near the airport that was reported from Isfrahan. So all of these may be strikes. So there may have been multiple drones slipped in. 
Well, I guess that's egg on the Iranians' face. If Israel, you know, Israel shot down most of what was sent at them, but failed to intercept what the Israelis sent to Iran. So that's a bit of egg on the uh, Iranian face. How did Israel pull that off? How did they get through the Iranian radar and air defense system? Well, drones can fly really low. They probably came in over radar. We don't know if they had any, uh, that looks like a suburban area. That could be a fire too. I don't know what that is. It's, I can't come in closer. Something kind of heavy in here, whatever that is. It's just a like small patch work farms here. And we got something right here. Hard to say. Well, what, what is interesting is when you see cluster of fires over areas where you got airfields. And we see two of these occasions in here. So when you the reason I take that of interest, because when you back out here, you see a lot of dots. There's a lot of fires that show up on this, but those are, are clustered. I mean, you see down here, these are mostly like scattered single dots. So maybe right in here. And this is pretty typical. You go anywhere, you'll see some of this kind of stuff. Now, if you come into Syria, there's quite an array of things here. But there are a lot of individual dots. You see, you'll see these all over the place when you come out. Look, we know Sicily and Italy is not being bombed. <laughs> Could be people just burning brush fires and gosh knows what. So, yeah, they're all over the place. These dots are. Now, that could be from the war over there in Ukraine. They're real heavy right there. A lot of dots in India. We know that's not all due to war. Oh, Salon was heavy in that category. And we know in Africa, Campfires is what they use at night. A lot of campfires. You can see it on satellite images too, the the, the kind of reddish glow in this area of the world. Because people there are poor. You see a lot of an Amazonia, the Amazon area of the jungles, a lot of fires. So that's typical. But even here in the United States, we have our share of that too. That's why you can't overinterpret this. And that's why I took special note of seeing these dots right on top of airfields. You're not going to have campfires in a military base like that. I see these dots are scattered. They're actually pretty small in this case, as you bear down. When you come out, this shows each one, and it just looks like they grow in area, but they really aren't. These are just usually individual fires. None around my property. <laughs> That's good to know. So that just gives you something. I showed you the rest of the world, and so you'd have something to compare it with. But again, the thing I note that makes this stand out is the fact that they were right over the air bases. That is not a place where you're going to see campfires. And that does correspond with what we've been told about the strikes so far. So it seems to be confirmed by Landsat imagery from NASA's Fire Information Resource Management System, FIRMS. I've used this a couple times in the past, but not that often. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, I think this is an updated report I showed earlier. Long distance aircraft fire missiles to strike. Well, I don't know. Is that what we're here is not missile strikes. So there's still a little bit of the a fog of war in this because the last reports I heard, saw was drones. Israel strikes Iran. Regime downplays damage from the attack. Iran is downplayed. Of course they would, like Israel did from the attack they took. Attack on Iran next to Nicrosite sends a message. We could have done worse. 
That's what the Israelis are trying to say. Yeah, we're just, this is a signal. We could have done worse. This was moderate compared to what we could have done. So we got a U.S. Uh, Army general saying the attack on Iran early Friday was likely intended as both a retaliatory measure and a cautionary measure. Israel must maintain vigilance in case Iran decides to respond with another show of force, retired Major General Mark McCarley said. Israelis had to retaliate, but at the same time within, within that retaliation was a message, and that is, yes, we can get through. Don't do it again. If you do it again, uh, then all heck will break out. So essentially, that does seem to be what happened. They didn't take out the nuclear facilities, but they had explosions all around them. And the fact that the Israelis did penetrate suggests the message that they could. So that may have been the actual message. How will Iran respond to that? Nuclear site under normal operations, state TV. Uh, EA said no damage. I've already shown you that report. Uh, Biden looks weak. What? Al Jazeera. <laughs> hmm. Neither side was has been listening to him. Many responses from U.S. Congress members have been largely supportive of Israel, but critical of the uh, Biden administration in the election year. He is not exercising influence on the Israelis, and he's not being pervasive with the Iranians as well. No one listens to Taterhead. There you go. That's the proof in the pudding. Sky News. The fact that it's likely limited in nature also suggests it's de-escalatory. There's a chance the Iranians uh, to deny this is significant damage. Of course, we know that Iran had previously said nothing would remain in Israel, but um, maybe that's not what's going to happen. So real quick, look at the Iron Dome. They've got somebody that asked me earlier. They're, they're, they have 10 missile batteries deployed, and a planned deployment is 15. So with just 10 missile batteries in Iron Dome, it's been quite effective. I'm surprised they didn't have more batteries than that. How many launchers can each battery, launches can each battery do? How fast can they reload? Apparently pretty quick. How many missiles do they actually have? I don't know. But they have certainly launched uh, quite a few. To the south, more 8,000 projectiles, estimated 4,000 rockets, 4,000 mortar drones. And this is talking about some attacks in uh, 2000, 2008. So apparently they got thousands of Iron Dome missiles. Well, they're going to need thousands, given what's arrayed against them. So they want to get production up, so they don't have co-production in the United States, and that mentions also the Air of Three missiles. Oh, they got Boeing as a contractor. Well, God bless them. <laughs> Yikes. And there's David Sling. This is the intermediate range. Uh, so this is medium or long-range surface-to-air ballistic missile. Now, that's interesting. The one that pops up in the picture is the one's being loaded at Fort Greeley, <laughs> which is not a David Sling missile. That's funny. But that's just anti-ballistic missile. Okay. Yeah. So when you, when you go to that link, it shows the Fort Greeley missiles. You know, my last duty station in the Army was indeed Fort Greeley, Alaska. Now, the David Sling is a two-stage missile. That's why I can reach out for that. That's why it's intermediate to long range. It came into play in 2017. It's manufactured by Raphael and Raytheon. Raytheon's got a strong history in interceptor missiles, cruise missiles, and the like. Raytheon has been a real strong company in that regard. I don't see anything in here about the Operation, okay, operational range is 160 miles or 200, 
50 kilometers for those outside the U.S. of A. Uh, these uh, iron, these iron dome missiles, fifty million dollars per battery, and a hundred thousand, a hundred fifty thousand dollars per interception. Those are expensive missiles. They're shooting at missiles that are probably, you know, maybe a thousand bucks. Some of those missiles come out of Gaza probably don't even cost that. So, in terms of a war of economic attrition. It's costing a lot for Israel to defend itself. Give you some idea. What's the operational range of this thing? Okay, it's... Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing it here. They don't go as far as the David Sling, but their most powerful missile is the Arrow missile. They started developing this sometime back. It's been in service since year 2000. So this actually predates David Sling. Looking for the range here. We know this is the missile they used to intercept those Hipti missiles that actually caused the first space war. Light ceiling exoatmospheric means it goes outside the atmosphere. Okay, here's operational range 90 kilometers to 56 miles. And I guess they got an extended version. It goes 150 kilometers to 93 miles. That's not way out. That's not particularly far out for a long-range missile. So I guess they were doing interceptors, interceptions against the uh, Houthi missiles once they got close to Israel. That's interesting. I thought they were more mid-course than that. Wow. Interesting. Go high, but not doesn't really go so far. But they did take out the Houthi missiles with these, so they've got a they've got a great intercept record so far. Hey Traveler, how you doing? Thank you. I love to see the ten years of Raytheon's donation start. But yeah, no kidding, Jason. It's interesting how these guys get elected to office and make a hundred, maybe two hundred thousand dollars a year in the case of president. And they wind up millionaires. How do they become millionaires, right? So we're not going to go long tonight, my friends. Uh, you got the gist, basic gist. I'll repeat it in a minute for those that just joined. Uh, other news. White House considers declaring a climate emergency in order to crack down on fossil fuels. What have they already done? They regulated your hot water heater, your dishwasher. So it'd be more energy efficient. Maybe, probably it won't be able to kill and sanitize germs like a lot of dishwashers have done. Maybe it won't even knock the food debris off your, but you have to pre-wash your dishes if you only use a dishwasher, probably. Guys, they, they, they are outlawing propane and all kinds of stuff like that. They want to cut back on wood stoves, gas stoves, propane hot water heaters. Make everything go electric, including they're already pushing automobiles and trucks. I mean, they're pushing stuff way beyond the point that the consumers want. Trucking industry don't want what they're trying to foist upon them. People don't want to buy their cars, but yet they're not done. They want to climb an emergency. So what would this guy do in his second term when he's not worried about re-election in terms of climate stuff? Whew. Oh, my gosh, guys. He might just try to ban internal combustion engines outright. Shut down gas. I don't know. What do you do? Well, you got a point there about who's really paying for them. What's your name? Freedom? Kind of hard to read. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff goes from here to there. Too much, really. Uh, again, for those just joining us, the operative word is that... Uh, 
U.S. officials, military, and Iran, uh, uh, Israeli officials have admitted to the strike. Uh, unlike some of these articles, the last info I saw it said it was drone strikes. The, A, the IAEA, I got to say that carefully, a lot of vowels, EAEO, confirms no damage to the Iranian nuclear facilities. Apparently, they were not attacked. It might be due to this deal between Washington and uh, Israel, as Washington gave Israel the green light to hit Rafa. So I'm just hitting this all kind of over for those that's just joined. Uh, make it, the Israelis had uh, already said they'd make it possible. This would make it possible to review their nuclear doctrine to deviate from our previous considerations, whatever that vague statement means. They had a promised immediate maximum levels of response, which we've not seen. We've gone here a little bit ago and looked at the air bases that were hit here on the NASA Fire Information Resource Management System. If you want to see me scroll down on that, catch it on the rewind. Um, so the strike happened. It's a limited strike, apparently a drone strike. And Iran is actually downplaying the damage. There we are, my friends. There we are. So with that, um, why don't you look at the earthquakes? Earthquakes are really active today. Oh, yeah, they did strike on uh, Ali Khomeini, the Ayatollah Khomeini's birthday. Sure, he really appreciated that. Uh, Chingnik, Alaska, 4.8. It's a fresh one. You got some biggies out here. This is a volcanic island out in one of the Japanese islands, it says here. Uh, 5.4. China's got a 5.1. Western Zizang, north of. Uh, 5.2 in the Fiji Islands, just uh, east uh, east of uh, Rodney. It's Rodney in the house, Rodney Middle, I suppose it is. But look over here. All right, so we're going to look. 5.1, yeah, where well, we saw that Turkey's got hit. 5.6 in Turkey. But now we're going to scroll in. There's a lot going on in the United States right now here on the West Coast. Again, north and south part of the Juan de Fuca plate is really active. Let's see, so there in Alaska. Oh, we'd had one here last night. Sustina, Alaska, 3.6. Petersville, 3.3. See, this one's a 4.1, McNeil, Canada, down here. Uh, 3.4 Petrolia, California. So let's zoom in. Those are some interesting ones down here. So we got two in this area Belden, California, two small ones, Prattville, California, Jellystone National Park. Looks like West Texas, maybe East New Mexico, McKinney Acres, Texas. Right here is what's interesting. We have 5.6 in Laredo, Mexico. Right next to it, we had a 4.4 and a 4.2. So it's really been shaking right there, and it's right on the San Andres Fault. And down here off of Mexico, 4.4. We got at least one Puerto Rican dance in the night, 3.2. Haiti, no, it's Dominican Republic. Excuse me, Haiti's over on this side. It's the 3.9. I know better than that. <laughs> I know where the Dominican Republic is. Right here, Haiti's on this side. Cuba, as my grandma used to call it, Cuba. <laughs> it's right there, right there. I mean, Atlantic Ridge is 5.2. Chile, 4.5. All right, guys, in the weather department, or space weather, 
the geomagnetic storm watch was canceled. Now this region here, 3645, 3647, and 3643 is all bunching together. If those were really to grow significantly, they could be a threat. Let's pray they don't grow significantly soon. We got a little comet movie here. See some CME stuff coming off the sun. We got a comet moving. That's probably Mercury right there. Maybe Venus. Imagine it's Mercury. That's a planet. That's your comet moving. And that stuff streaming from the sun. A little CME there. Not aimed at us, apparently. All right, Arnold. Are you seeing aurora in your area tonight? Anybody in Alaska seeing an aurora? Because Arnold said last time we showed this, he didn't have any aurora. All right, that was the 16th of April. It didn't miss us. Nothing between now and the 12th of June is coming between the Earth and the Moon. Nothing we know about. But we had several that did here over the last few weeks, quite a few. Uh, that's just outside the Moon. But we had this one, this one. Both came within the orbit of the Moon. Really close to Earth. See, that one had a projected zero lunar distance, but it did miss us. I've shown y'all the report on that already. So, nothing to be scared of right this minute. <laughs> nothing I know of. I don't know about that storm right there either. Oh, that's not up to date. Let's bring it up to now. Okay, that looks more like it. But I don't have the storm outside. Looks like the storms died down. Tornado trackers were busy earlier today. But Denver's 35, a little snow up in uh, north central Colorado. North Dakota, north Montana. North Minnesota and Brown Perennial Land. Denver's 35, Salt Lake City's 35, but Phoenix is 70, Planet Houston is 73. All right, guys, we're not going to go all over the weather tonight. I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to read the chat room. We're going to call it a night because i got to get up really early, like three hours from now. But Molly Jetson's found the sun. <laughs> Meet George Jetson. Jane, dee -dee 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 Jane, his wife, his boy, Elroy. <laughs> Astro must have been the son of Scooby Doo. Or maybe the grandson of Scooby Doo. Because Astro talked just like Scooby Doo talked. <laughs> Remember that rut rope? I don't know. I believe, I believe Scooby Doo and Astro talked just like each other. What do y'all think? <laughs> <laughs> All right, last of skull. So first, a new days. Hey, 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 hey. It's Fat Albert on my way. No, 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 gonna have a good time. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, guys, both thumbs up and comments. Thank you, Alaska Soul. Our own number ones is checking number. Thank you for that, Jesse. Arnold, it was zero when I hit thumbs up. Are y'all going to y'all fight or y'all wrestle over it then? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to tell. Two people hit at the same time. Brandon's wondering what Israel learned from its limited attack. Maybe how to evade Iranian air defense systems. Killer Smurf, how you doing? Rodney, I'm back. It's like Arnie. <laughs> I'm Bach. All right. Colorado Jan, how you doing?
Thank you, Michelle, for sharing that site. You said you back. I won't be front. I told you guys I'd be back tonight, and here I am. Smart patriot. Uh, he could uh, deal with both. All right, S C D H L. Does that mean schedule number four? I'm sure, this is going to get much worse. I would expect so. I, you know, that it's still escalating. The Rubicon's been crossed. It's just a matter of how fast it's going to escalate. For some purpose, each side needs to be able to blame the other as much as they can. You know, Iran's got a population that doesn't like their leadership. Same is true in Israel. <laughs> Same is true in the United States. Though they're all, on, you know, walking on eggshells. Because Biden is afraid of losing his election. He's afraid Michigan will, will be the swing state that will do him in. And... Uh, uh, Netanyahu, you know, they were after him just before all this started, uh, after, especially after October 7th. A lot of protests, and he was, uh, you know, if he faces trial, he might go to prison. So Netanyahu kind of needs a war just to stay in power. But if he turns it on too fast, it ain't going to be pretty. And there's no way a full-blown war between Iran and Israel is going to be a pretty situation. Everybody knows that. Very strange show. This show tonight... Ask a soul. Appreciate you sticking with me there. I suppose the Iranians could have tested device in NK uh, if they wanted to hide the fact, but I think uh, they uh, they would admit it. So you're saying they could use North Korea to test their device. Maybe they've already done it. and <laughs> Maybe they will do it. I don't know. Jason, you could do me a favor. Let me know. Oh, okay. I had military cargo planes flying all night today out of Anchorage. That don't surprise me. I'm well, surprised they're not flying out of Elmendorf. I've been to Elmendorf Air Force Base, and I've seen the, that's the first time I ever saw the big uh, C-5 aircraft. It opens its nose and lets in all that cargo. That's the biggest cargo plane. Uh, 1747s are used as commercial cargo planes. That's the your military cargo plane. Of course, the military uses a lot of C-17s now. It's a little bit smaller, probably more cost efficient. Uh, I see a lot of C-17s fly out of uh, Redstone Arsenal. They used to buzz my windows back when I was in building 4203. That and a big flying guppy. Well, it's kind of interesting to watch those fly by. Those uh, C-17s flew by pretty close to our office complex. You know, we were out there just south of the Army Airfield, so we saw a lot of stuff come in and out. Anyway. Schedule. Shit always runs downhill, and there's nothing but a huge slope. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's just kind of stay out of it. Newsflash. RFK Jr. talks funny. <laughs> All right. Oh. There we go. Uh, what did Duck Brain say? Somebody eliminate your comment. I don't see it. That's yeah, family channel, guys. Let's keep it clean. No reason to insult the other channels. I'm I'm with that, Jason. I'm trying to stay out of that. Gabby, how you doing? How's the weather? Well, we had some rain here. Thank you, Rodney, for sharing the Goldbacks link there. Tell you what, right now is the time to get some. And I think they're really nifty. I keep this sample out here. 
like I keep a dollar bill here because I'll tell you it's spend your money local all the time. I just want to keep a dollar bill here. And I keep this here just for you guys to reference. This is a one one thousandth of troy ounce of gold. This is pure gold. You melt it down, you'll get gold. And you put it in your wallet. Carry it just like you carry one of these, except it's worth more. <laughs> And it will never be devalued by the Federal Reserve or anybody else other than just, you know, market forces. And right now the market forces are strongly on the upside. And I see no reason why that will reverse. Just make sure when you go to the site, use the code GreenGregs and get yourself 1% off. That also gets me a big whopping 1% commission. I usually get a few pennies at a time when people buy them, but it does my soul good and other people are taking care of their monetary situation. Traveler. I love y'all. Most of love, Greg. Well, thank you, Traveler. Smart patron. Thank you for the hearts. think I will go have some dinner and catch y'all later. Okay, Rodney. Well, let's do these at your dinner time, don't we? No compliance with any of it from me. What's up, Bogus? Congressman salary is about what a pharmacist makes. Show me how one pharmacist's country with net worth of Pelosi. No. <laughs> a pharmacist is not going to have the worth of Pelosi or any of the Congress critters for that matter. Unless they're also... I do have a pharmacist friend who is a state senator here in Alabama. State senator. And I call him a friend because he used to come to our power grid defense committee meetings we had here in Huntsville. He would actually attend. And he was a real helpful guy. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you get. That's right, Arnold. Hey, Slee, how you doing? We have a government that just throws our money at anything, thinking it will just disappear. Oh, my God. Oh, there's all kind of articles right now. I plan to do a, on some morning, that I don't do a late night session, I'm going to post a video. I got to put it all together. I'm going to post a video for the coffee club members on the Green Greg side on uh, our finan financial situation, the risk of the dollar. I've been putting it off because I wanted to put a bunch of stuff together, but the wait, later to wait, I'm losing some of that thread. So I need to do it sooner rather than later. I wasn't anticipating going live tonight, but with all the stuff going on, you know what I did? I was going to pay a bill. I had a bill that was due on the 18th. And I was going to pay it, but I got so caught up in the news, I didn't realize it until after I went off my live session, it was already too late. I missed it, so I'm going to get a late fee. Probably 25 to 40 bucks. It costs me money to do these things sometimes. <laughs> That's another reason I come on usually later. I got so much business to take care of. Stoic. Oh, you make me cringe, Arnold. Uh oh, Stoic, why are you cringing? Sure weather. How you doing, buddy? Up there in West Boca Stan. A lot of movement on the California coastline. Yeah, there's talk of volcanic activity on that Juan de Fuca plate. We know that Juan de Fuca plate is being subducted and will play a major role in a Cascadia uh, earthquake, should that occur. So, and that's expected. It's actually due. And the uh, those tsunami markers in Japan, which were way above the line, said do not build here below this point. They were way above the line where Fukushima was built. But by then, when they got to Fukushima, they thought that was some old folks' tale. Well, the geologists researched it and found out that all that originated from the tsunami that hit Japan at that level, bigger than the tsunami that hit Fukushima. The last time the Cascadia subduction zone went, that Cascadia subduction zone, when it goes, is going to be ugly. Cuba, Jeff K. called it as well, did he? <laughs> did Jeff K. call it Cuba? I don't know my grandma used to call it Cuba. But she twisted everything. She called me Grig. She, she would twist all kinds. Had a neighbor girl named Tina. She called her Tinker. She always twisted names. Bless her heart. She was born in uh, 
1901. When I was a kid, I knew a lot of people that was born in the 1800s. Still a fair number of them around. I used to talk to them. And I used to really like, I always wanted to ask them about the war between the states. Now, you know, I talked to you guys, I said I had these books here. I got them when I was 13. Long before then, I was interviewing old people and getting the real scoop on what went down in the war. Uh, what, you know, usually people tell me what their aunts and uncles and maybe their parents would tell them because the actual descendants of the, the actual uh, people that lived in that war were mostly gone by then. But, uh, yeah, I think the last soldier died in 58. He was considered the world's oldest soldier at one time in Guinness Book of World Records, the last Confederate soldier. But uh, there were descendants of them, direct descendants still alive. And, you know, the people in that period had a lot of stories to tell. And a lot of that wouldn't get passed down. So I would go around when I was a kid, a little kid, and I was constantly asking these people about that because it just fascinated me. I've been fascinated by warfare and uh, history in those regards since I was a kid. That's why I would read stuff, military technology stuff. So I've been on this kick of reading military matters for 51 years. I mean, serious, hardcore stuff. For 51 years. Of course, I was an ROTC in high school. I joined the Army. When I got out, I joined the National Guard. I worked for the Army as an Army civil servant. When I was in college, working on strategic defense initiative, I have worked on the M1 uh, tank program. I've worked on the F-15s, and I've done a lot of NASA stuff other than that. I had a little period there, about a year and a quarter, I worked on industrial control equipment. But other than that, my entire career has been space-related, other than some military stuff. But some of the space-related stuff was also military, a little bit toward the stuff I was doing here in the last year. Some of the satellite work I was doing. They were actually military. Well, the last one was not a military satellite. Until the two before that was. I worked on three different satellite programs over the last year. So Cascadia, 1700. Yeah, it's about the time. And they said it goes off about every 250 years or something like that. So we're overdue. Uh oh. So, so, so man, I'm telling you. All I'm having the time of my life from being jerked around. I'm kind of feeling like Joe in an ice cream shop. <laughs> Lord. Well, he should be happy if he's in an ice cream shop. So I hope that means you're happy. Hey, Wendy, how you doing? Uh, let's see here. Uh, that's scrolling on me here. I'm trying to read stuff here. Kim Possible. How you doing, Kim Possible? Good to see you back here again. New Days, Colorado Jan sent me a message saying she can't comment in here. Didn't we just see her? I don't know why that would be. Did somebody hide Colorado Jan? Don't do that. Don't do that, folks. She's one of my big supporters. I don't see any note in here where some action's been taken against her. Could have been an accidental thing. Huh. Why not? I don't see her commenting in here. Well, that's interesting. I will go check my uh all right once you get through the comments here i'm gonna go check the uh uh my dashboard and see if there's an issue there in fact i'll do that right now we don't want to call her out of jam knocked out so for, you, for those people that's watching and whether coffee and breakfast and one of the news parts over, we're just in the conversation part now. Because uh, we're family and my chatters, here's what really supports my channel. <laughs> Fun for the super chats, I wasn't getting nothing out of YouTube. I'm serious, guys. They, they're kicking me hard now. 
So um, let me see if I can pull this up in the, uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, gotta switch username here probably. Ding, 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 I was taking forever. Which account, go to slow ahead. Yeah, I want to look, see if there's some issue here. Going to um, go to my studio back screen here. Guys, I'm hot. It's hot here tonight. Where do I got to go from here? It should be under settings, I think. Channel. Upload permissions, community. She's been in the community. Okay. Stand, standard. Mo she's a moderator. Nobody can hide her. She's a moderator. No, she's not hidden from the channel. There's only five people that have been hidden over here. She's a moderator, so nobody else can knock her out. Your prepper's a moderator over here. <laughs> so I don't know why she can't chat. That's odd. Why can't she leave a comment? It don't even make sense. She's a moderator. She's not in the hidden list. I think only I could hide a moderator. Wow. Get out of that one. Hit screen. That's peculiar. Mighty, mighty peculiar. I have no idea what happened or why. Colorado Jan, I hope you're listening. I don't know why we can't see or hear you. Why you can't chat. You're watching Dutch and Sense during an earthquake schedule four. I don't know if that's what S C D H L stands for, but that's an easy way to say it. Gabby, how you doing? Jetsons one at night. Out to the sun. <laughs> Meet George Jetson. I said, although I do wonder if there was a crustal slip. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Jason. No roars tonight. Greg, too many clouds. Okay. Brian Gunderson has a channel that shows hot spots all over the earth. He watches that region just off New York coast and predicting an earthquake would eventually hit. That was six months ago. Interesting. We had that one in New Jersey. Hmm. Uh, the Flintstones and the you know, Hanna-Barbera, or whatever the name was, come up with both at the same time. They thought they'd have a Stone Age people and a Space people. Rosie will be a mainstream product soon. No kidding. Hey, my Scooby Doo is better than Astra. <laughs> yeah, we got a Scooby Snacks coming there sometimes. Hey, brother, I think that every time there's an aurora, it's a cloud nucleation. See, it's always cloudy there. That's sad. I've seen some really nice auroras when I was up in Alaska. They're flying out of Elmendorf. That's what I expect. Elmendorf. Exactly. Alaska Soul. Greg, you know they dropped a Miniman missile out of a C-5 on a sled and fired it? Yeah, I know about that. Actually, and that's what's funny. See, prior to that, I was working with a group 
that was looking at taking our hybrid rockets and doing that from an aircraft. We were looking at the uh, Lockheed Martin Constellation aircraft. It was one that we could get access to. And we were looking at for an air launched hybrid rocket to do the same thing, drop it out of a county. And uh, so my company, Hart, was working with a group from Indianapolis, Indiana. No, they weren't in Indianapolis. Actually, they were uh, east of there. Um, what was that town? It was close to, uh, to uh, oh shoot, I'm getting brain locked. Anyway, I'm getting brain locked. But so this company, the guy named Pete Batar was running it. And he's still up there. He's still a very much an entrepreneur. He had uh, he had got a guy to be the uh, kind of the financial wizard of the company. And that guy's name was George Allison. So uh, George Allison and I were standing having a conversation with each other at the Tucson ISDC. And some guy walked up to us and he said, uh, Allison's are kind of rare. So some guy walked up to us and said, hi, my name is Jim Allison. We just looked at each other, <laughs> kind of laughed. So hi, I'm Greg Allison. I'm George Allison. George passed away, unfortunately. Smart old guy. Saw the first goldbacks on the Atlas. First time I saw somebody else using goldbacks was at the Purgatory in uh, Snowflake, Arizona. Somebody else walked in with a handful of them. Times on the beach, Lincoln City. You smell sulfur when the winds blow, right? Oh, I guess that's in the volcanoes. Like I got an email or somebody messaged me. So we'll check the, uh, I'll see if anybody sent me a donation through my website here in a minute. Uh, what's happening to the channels, Arnold? Dutch and Sense and Brian. Yeah, Colorado Jan is one of our top supporters. She sends me a check every month. Bless her heart. That's how, how she does the super chat. And we all love Colorado Jan. She's a sweetheart. I hate it. She can't chat for some reason, and I don't know why. Yeah, switch the cell phone or something if you can. We're going to be done here in a little bit. It's already 327. I got to get up in a couple hours. Jeez. Oh, we got a couple of donations. We got three donations. Yeah. Awesome. Got a donation from Michelle Young. We got a no donation from Marsha. And we got a donation from Kim Possible. Three donations. Whoa. Let's see. We got uh, Michelle. She she donates like every, every day almost. $10. Marsha Renfro. A $25 donation and Kim Possible $25 donation. Salute to you three. Amen. Thank you so very much. I am greatly appreciated, Michelle, sharing the link there. The how they're sending these donations in. I get uh, uh, only I lose about 3% as opposed to 30% here on YouTube. So this and I can uh, send this straight to my bank account instead of waiting to the 20th of next month for YouTube to send it to me. Good Lord, I don't know if we have a power grid left. <laughs> so I appreciate that. That really helps me a lot. That's good. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing the link, Michelle. So thank you, Kim Possible, Marsha, and uh, Michelle. Salute to all three of you. Amen. Y'all made, made my night here. She's turning her computer off. Hope to refresh it. Correct. Okay, we'll hang on and give her a chance to come back on. I don't know how you can only get two hours of sleep and function. Well, college rent me. It rewired me. 
I'm not mortal anyway. Well, I am. I am living in a physical body. <laughs> but I am something of a different kind of a being. <laughs> Just remember, I can shout light. Yeah, way to go, Super Chatters. Amen. Appreciate that, guys. Ladies, I should say. Ladies all. Greg does power nap. I don't know. It's whatever it is. <laughs> when I knock out, I knock out. Now, actually, I wake up too often. That's what's aggravating. Not good for you, though, the news day. Some news, new days, sometimes it catch up to you. Yeah, we probably were connected through so many different previous lives, new days. They say you need a minimum of six hours just to repair the damages of the day. Your body to repair. Otherwise, you're supposed to age very significantly. I don't think I'm doing too bad for 64. I've already had more waking hours than my brother that's 10 years older than me. Quite a bit more. We figured that out like 10 years ago. So I've been I've been kind of alive or at least awake longer than he has. And in my waking hours, this is why I got the kind of content that I got. My waking hours, and most people, when I was a kid, when most of the kids were out goofing around playing, I was talking to all the old people all the time, older people. I wanted to know stuff. I was always asking questions. Always asking questions. Always talking to older people. I, all my, a lot of my buddies and best friends were people in their thirties or really elderly people. When I'd be talking to people about the events in the past, and I was trying to do my genealogy back then. I interviewed a lot of people, figured out a lot of the genealogy way back, just some conversations. Uh, Einstein said you only needed a series of twenty-minute naps throughout the day. Yeah, well, Einstein was not a doctor though, a medical doctor. Greg, look on Discord. I showed the last 30 days of earthquakes, and it's a shocker for Alaska. I'm going to close some things down to pull up Discord. And I got to know where to go look. Those in all these windows to find my little icon to click on that. There it is. I need multiple. I need a computer with multiple screens. Oh, it's up. The last thing I see is Fusion Warp Drive. Shaggy, I don't know how to navigate through Discord. That's why I'm not in here much. I really only know how to go to one place. <laughs> And I got in trouble for leaving a chat session. I, when I went to bed and sort of heard y'all talking, I thought somebody broke in my house. And I, look, when you only get to be in bed a couple of hours and suddenly you're woken up by sounds, it really disrupts your day night. That's one reason I don't get too involved here. I just don't know how to get, navigate this thing. I don't know where it is. Don't know how to find it. An announcements, maybe? No. I don't know. General, I may not be able to find my way back to where I was now. Oh, now, what the heck's all in here? Canadian Prepper. Oh, is that it? I think I found it. Lord Almighty. Last Earthquake Center. Man, you guys are rocking. Open browser. Let's see if I can get that up. Still a Discord site. I'll right, see if I can pull that up on another browser. I want my default browser. I'm going to close this. 
Now I'm not going to know how to get back to my other page. Close Discord. Hope it don't wake me up tonight. Let's see here. Got that in. So just pulled up a screenshot. I want to say, how do you find earthquakealaska.edu? Find the root place it came from. Aha, here we are. Well, that's better. All right, guys, let's uh, find the right screen. I'll come back and I'll share this. Share screen. Bada bang. All right, this is the source from whence Wow. What's the time frame for these? Oh, a bunch of them around Delta Junction. Man, I never felt a real earthquake the whole time I was up there for two years and a month. A little heavy concentration right here. What's this about? To, is this cracking open right here? Is this rift going to get bigger? What is happening there? Maybe it's cause Alaska Range is still there's some maybe some land mass in here is driving north. And the last see Alaska Range runs here, guys. I used to be right here at the foothills on the north slope of the Alaska Range. That's crazy. What's the time frame for this Alaska so? They type in Google Alaska. Yeah, I found it. I found it. No, there ain't that many people here. <laughs> ain't nobody living here. It's, you fly over, look, you can fly over Alaska and look down, and you won't see nothing but mountains, trees, rivers, lakes. You won't see a single sign of a human being. For, look, there's a road called the Richardson Highway, runs up here. There's the Alaska Canadian Highway, it runs through here. And then there's the road, Hall Road, what we used to call that. I don't know, they renamed it. They went north, and there's a few roads down in here. You can be driving along the Alaska Highway, the main highway, in a thousand miles. And it says the highway runs this way. There's highway runs up through here. It says one goes to Fairbanks from down here, and there's one goes up to Delta Junction from down here. And Delta Junction's got the. Uh, uh, Alaska Highway come up this way. Actually, it don't come up. It comes up before the, on the back side of Delta um, on Fort Greeley. I drove that one night. Then went in toward Fort Greeley. It's called Elizabeth Pass over here. I, don't, I drove that late night. It's not a smart idea. Nobody even knew it was going to be there. But you can drive for miles and miles and miles. You won't pick up a radio station. You won't see a fence post or a mailbox. Nothing. It's wilderness. This state is wilderness through and through. It's one ginormous state of wilderness. The kind of railway is pretty wide. In the Brooks Range ain't nothing up there, Harley. So the uh, oil fields up here are starting to run dry. There's tons of petroleum here, but Biden shut it off. There was a guy that was a homesteader living up here by himself for a long time. The government told him that he had to get out. His family could not continue on that homestead. That's terrible. Beautiful homestead. Extremely remote. I mean, you don't get more remote than living in the Brooks Range, especially up in this area, because there just ain't nobody around. No one. You got the only house and maybe two or three hundred miles. I mean, there ain't nobody around. It's vacant in terms of people you are in the wilderness wow 
That is what. What is the time frame for these? open that I don't get an idea of is this for a week a month a year a day I hope that's not a day shaggy what's the time frame yes I live in the north part of the center of all those earthquakes so you're right up in here huh whoo Thought you were in Wasilla. Well, yeah, that is around Wasilla, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Holy smoke. That's Anchorage right there. So you got Valdez over here. Wow. Cordova. That's intense. Wow. Going to dinner now, huh? Too cold in Alaska. <laughs> it's not near as cold as it was back when I was up there in the early 80s. We've gone through the temperatures looking at it, you know, from uh, windy. I have not seen anything. The whole time we've been looking, I haven't seen anything that approach the temperatures that I used to see. And I had some friends that were up there installing the missiles at the missile base. They didn't see the same kind of temperatures I used to see up there. Nothing close. So Alaska has warmed up now. See, that's where that kind of almost had me convinced that global warming was real until I had a good long conversation with uh, Dr. Uh, oh, shoot, uh, Roy Spencer. Roy Spencer is a climatologist. He's the guy in charge of the satellite data worldwide. And he assured me that that that, that was that that was not the case. The world was not cooling down. And he gave me a lot of examples and reasons why. He taught me out of that philosophy. And he, uh, it turns out that when Alaska is, like during the Ice Age, Alaska was warm. The rest of the continent was cold. So this stuff shifts around. I ain't going to defend Alaska, just saying, better kid, if Alaska seceded from the Union, I'd probably be on my way up there. <laughs> I'd probably be on my way back. Not been there in a long time. The Russians ain't gonna take Alaska. When I was in Alaska, I used to think the civilian the civilians up there were going to defend the army. They were better armed than we were by, by a long shot. So don't worry about the Alaskans. They can take care of themselves. Yeah, well, the USGS gives you a watered-down version. There are more earthquakes than what they show. What they show is watered down. All right. I'll ask us all. Maybe I, that'll be a good homework sign before you figure some of this stuff out. West Coast looks the same for the last 30 days. Yeah, well, that's what uh, Chewy Weather's been telling me. <laughs> they might all right guys i uh i've had ed kiker on my green graves channel i interviewed him i met ed kiker in 1981 at fort Greely, alaska we've been good buddies ever since he's a geologist and he's also a space advocate and he uh He uh, he was also in the Army prior to me meeting him. He was an Army civil servant when I met him. He was the Fort Greeley Post Environmental Officer when I met him. He's he's very conservative, very conservative. He's not, you know, the he's not the AOC type, okay? Not by a long shot. He is very conservative. He uh, after he got out of the Army in Alaska, he joined the Alaska National Guard. 
as a captain. They put him over an Eskimo scout unit. He told me they were in patrol up somewhere in remote regions of Alaska, and they actually found a patrol of Russian soldiers, all of which had met their demise before they got to them. It was the local Inuit, the Eskimos, took them out. And it explained to me that they hated the Russians because they had some people on the other side of the Bering Strait, and they were very badly mistreated by the Russians. So they just hated them. So this patrol was probably trying to sneak in Alaska to do some recon. That kind of thing happens. Probably some of their special forces, some of their uber spetsnaz, cream of the cream in Russia. They were no match for the Eskimos. They got done in. Occasionally, I've heard reports of Alaska, uh, of Russian aircraft being recovered up there too. They were dispatched with extreme prejudice by the Eskimo, the Inuit. Fell asleep listening to Dutch and woke up into my bed shaking. <laughs> was he telling you your bed was shaking when you woke up, traveler? <laughs> I didn't say I hated the Russians. I said they did. A lot of people that have lived under them do. I've been to Moscow. Best trip I ever made overseas was to Moscow. I got Russian friends. I went to the Russian space agency, Roscosmos. I've been to their company, Inky, which was spun off from their space agency, privatized. That was the organization that developed the lander that landed on Venus, the Venera. And I met guys who were the engineers on that project who developed that lander. I rode in a van across from Moscow, just sitting in a van. He's right across from me, and we were just sitting there chit-chatting the whole way. How's the cabin going? Well, it's got a roof on it, and it's got floors, one wall outside put on. I'm in Alabama. I've been dealing with a messed up vehicle for months. And now I'm trying to sell this place to get out of here. I got to sell it or I'm going to be in deep camp sheet. I'm going to be at grave financial risk if I don't get rid of this place really fast. So I got to do that. And then I'm heading back to uh, Arizona. <laughs> Next to mammoth bones and the permafrost. <laughs> yeah, there's no telling. See, there was no report of it. The, Inuit, the Eskimos didn't report it. The Russians didn't report it. They weren't going to report it. They, came, they snuck a patrol into Alaska and they come up missing. They weren't going to say nothing. Nothing was ever said about it, was it? It was hushed over. I asked New Days to have you add me on Facebook so I'll send you stuff quicker. Well, send me a friend request. Just asking you today is to have you add me. What is your, are you Alaska Soul on Facebook? What are you on Facebook? Send me a friend request. Yeah, I think our biggest enemy is inside the Beltway in D.C. So I've said that before. <laughs> Look how the Senate just, uh, excuse me, Rokas. Uh, I've actually done a little contract work for SpaceX through Bastion Technologies. Met, I met his uh, president of SpaceX before SpaceX ever launched a rocket. I was in a workshop with her, a very small workshop. There was only maybe seven or eight people in it. And it was a three-day long workshop at the Johnson Space Flight Center. And so I, mean, I, I was up close for about three days with Gwen Shotwell. She's the, the real driving force behind SpaceX. And she's she was stunning looking back then. She's still stunning looking. You know, that's been 20 years ago. <laughs> that woman uh, takes care of herself. Um, she uh, So I went to uh, 
and I've met Elon twice. I've actually, uh, in the process of in, uh, SpaceX, don't have any people here in Huntsville, no full timers, as far as I know. Uh, but Blue Origins is big here in the Huntsville area. I've got, I've done three interviews with Blue Origin. I'm just waiting to see if they want a fourth interview. If they do, it'll be a four hour interview. New days. Salute to you. Thank you, New Days. Of course, we've been together many lifetimes, and I'm sure many more futures as well. That's why you always get alimony payments. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. A big old fat wet kiss. <laughs> yeah. That uh, wind shot well seems formidable. I suppose she is, uh, Jason. Uh, she was, you know, easy to talk to. She's a nice, really brilliant young woman. She still seems young. She was a brilliant lady. As for SpaceX ever flew a rocket. And we were all there to present to uh, this workshop low-cost techniques and things to be done to be low-cost in space. And I had done that. I'd studied other companies that were doing it. And that was in my presentation at that workshop. I forget what that workshop was called. I still got my chart somewhere that I presented there long ago. Greg, would it take a trip to Mars and Elon Musk Starship? Oh, would I take a trip to it? Well, they'd have to fly a few of those and get all the bugs worked out before I think about it. Maybe I could start the Red Planet Red Worms Company. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So late new days. Thank you so much. Yeah, you gone. I think I need to be gone. It's four o'clock in the morning. I got to get up in an hour or so. I got to go, guys. I got to go. So, uh, all right. It's been an awesome night. It's been a crazy day, crazy night. Uh, the the, the uh, Iranians had crossed the Rubicon on the 14th, and the Israelis definitely crossed the Rubicon today, firing into the other country directly. It was a limited engagement, so it has not yet provoked that immediate response from Iran. So the bad news is this is escalating. The good news, it seems to be a simmering escalation. So you might still have time to get ready. Fuel costs will probably go up due to speculation. It might tick her down a little bit, but it could still explode at any time. Cost of oil. It did go up from 82 to 85. I don't know if it's dropped down any, if it's gone up more. I haven't double checked that. Better not cheat on life or alimony is going to be a killer. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Yeah, she gets me. She likes to make me blush. Yeah, yeah. All right, Wendy. All righty. Thank you, Super Chatters, all four of you ladies, one and all. Thank you, Mods, for all you're doing. Thank you, everyone, for watching. To one and all, a good night, good day, wherever you are. Ho, 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 and great.